Every year, over 100 million people go through passport control to get into Britain. Most are welcome and legal, many are not. For the first time on television, we go behind the scenes of the UK Border Agency, the men and women on the front line of the Immigration Service. Tonight, the hothead at Heathrow. Send me back then. Just we will not do that happen. without asking you further questions. And the only thing you can do is wait patiently. Shouldn't they because you and me talking like this is just delaying it, OK? A marriage in India doesn't ring true. An album with a picture of yourself or with somebody else is not evidence of living together. Do you have any documentary evidence? Immigration, can you stop what you're doing, please? And a raid in Liverpool ends in tears. Thank you, mind, OK? You look upset. I'm going to place you in cuffs. It's estimated that up to one million people live or work illegally in the UK. It's the job of enforcement teams to track those people down and remove them from Britain. Assistant Immigration Officer Adele Partington is part of a team in Glasgow preparing for a raid. It's currently ten past six in the morning and uh, we're all just getting kitted up, uh, ready to go out and carry out an arrest team visit. It's part of the job, but you always still get a little bit of, of jitters. It wouldn't be normal if you didn't get any. This morning, the team are about to pay a surprise visit on a flat where they believe illegal immigrants are living. Uh, police vehicle. First visit is to flat 2-1. Target of the visit is a Pakistani male. The intelligence for this visit suggests that Mr Shah lives at the target address with 10 or 11 other Pakistani males. Uh, some of the occupants allegedly have counterfeit documentation. The intention today is obviously to search for and arrest Mr Shah and any other immigration offenders that we come across. OK. Thank you. Well, the target is to locate and arrest the offender. But for this package, although it's listed only one offender, there's a possibility of 10 or 11 other people residing at the address. We could also be possible offenders as well. So they can be straightforward or they can be complicated. Um, until you actually get through the door, you don't, you don't know what you're going to find. The flat is not far from the team's base. It's now 7am. Can you open the door, please? It's the immigration police. I'm already up there. It's immigration and police. We've got a warrant to be here. Can you take us through to your living room, please? How many people are on the premises? Can you have a seat, please? It appears the early visit has paid off. The occupants were still in bed. OK, so what's your immigration status here? Uh, I'm indefinite. Indefinite? I'm indefinite. Do you have a passport? We'll it's in uh, my wallet. You're inside the bed. OK, we need access to that door and that door. Pakistani identity card. You got keys? There are only two people in the flat. But there are also two locked doors and no keys. Right, if you don't have keys, we're going to knock the door in anyway, so it's up to yourself. The intelligence that there are ten people living here seems to be wrong. And the two men they've just found are both legal. But the kitchen window of this third floor flat is open. Officers think someone has done the unthinkable. Just had a jumper uh, from the flat and I reckon it's about 50 feet. <laughs> One of the occupants tried to climb down the drain pipe to escape. He lost his footing. He's managed to struggle to the dustbins at the rear of the building. Did anybody else jump out? Uh, one guy. One guy. Where is he? Is he hurt? Uh, no. No? Mm. Where is he? Other side. Other side there? We're on trying to find Dylan Hill just now. I believe he's been over the fence here, into the green area. 
So we're just having a look to try and find him just now. The other man must have kept his grip when he climbed down, and now he's on the run. But his injured friend is losing consciousness. Put your back. Ashley Pears has been with the Immigration Service for just over a year. This is her first serious right, incident. Better. Thank you. Okay. Sahid, come on, speak to me. She tries to keep the man awake until help arrives. I know you're back, so try and stay calm, okay? Try not to move. The paramedics quickly decide they must get the man to a hospital. They fear he has broken his back from the impact of the fall. In hospital, he's told his spine is fractured. When his immigration paperwork is complete, he'll be sent back to Pakistan. The runner remains at large. It's coming out. Take a seat there. Coming up. At Heathrow, the passenger who's not here to work, but he's too poor to holiday. <laughs> this is because I'm poor. <laughs> I can't help it. I, I, I don't have money now. And in Delhi, the financial analyst whose figures don't add up. Um, if you were earning six lakhs per year and paying tax, you wouldn't take home 45,000 rupees per month. It's like uh, it's all uh, company technical things. I, okay. Actually, I don't know how okay. they do that. Sure. Terminal 3 at Heathrow is the main entry point for travellers from the Middle East, America, Asia and Africa. Officers have stopped a passenger from Johannesburg who's flown in on a tourist visa. But he doesn't have much money, so they suspect he may be here to work. South African gentleman. Mm -hmm. He's a very solidly built South African gentleman. Okay. Put occupation, I think, as bodyguard. Right. On his landing card. And he has apparently spent um, the recent months in South Africa doing a bodyguard training course. He may be looking for that kind of work in the UK. Okay. However, so far, he's told us he's coming to visit a cousin. Okay. So that's all we've got so far. Righto. Immigration officer Lisa Lee investigates. Is it Pavia? Pavia? How do you say your name, Pavia. sir? Pavia. Would you not just like to follow me? I'm going to be dealing with you initially today, and then a colleague of mine will be taking over the case. Um, How long is this going to be? As long as it takes, sir. Unfortunately, these things have a habit of taking quite a long time. There's lots of paperwork to do. Something stupid and simple it is. This is immigration. Yeah. Nothing is stupid with immigration. No, no, no. If you'd just like to follow me, we need to take your photograph, OK, because that's standard procedure when we stop anyone, and then we need to place you in the care of our holding facility so that we can come back and talk to you in a more comfortable environment. Just follow me now. You didn't realise, but my point of view of this yeah. is... If you have nothing to worry about, then everything will be fine, but we need to establish that before we can do anything else, OK? And the only way we can really do that is by sitting down and having a proper chat with you. All right, then, so if you'd just like to follow me... The passenger says he's here to stay with his cousin and help okay. decorate the house. It always arouses suspicion if somebody says they don't have a job and yet they're here on holiday. You kind of think, well, he's not from a wealthy background. He doesn't appear to have lots of savings. In fact, he says he has no savings. He's had to save to pay for his course. You know, it's just, is it credible that somebody with little money would come on a five-week holiday? And that's what we need to establish. Thanks a lot. While the bodyguard is detained, Officer Lee checks his story. Is that all right? OK. Can you tell me why um, your cousin's coming to the UK today? The sponsor, the cousin, has just corroborated pretty much what the passengers said. They've got lots of decorating to do in their house. They've been trying to do their house up for ten months and um, he's just coming to help them decorate. Um, which is odd, but hey, everyone has their way they want to spend their holidays. I understand you wanted to speak to me. The holding room at Heathrow is hardly the best place to start a holiday. It's starting to annoy the bodyguard. I can't tell you. This is seriously me. OK, let this me just explain. This is unnecessary. If I was a criminal, if I did something wrong, whatsoever, fine, do it, but not like this. We're not suggesting for one moment you're a like criminal, this. OK? You are seeking entry to the UK. Our job, our job as immigration officers is to establish okay, whether you fine. qualify Listen, for entry, OK? Don't, don't insult my intelligence here. Send me back then. We have to go through due process. I'm we have this close, taking my cigarettes and just...
laughing out here to just to have a stupid cigarette. Okay, well... And it's not I even the cigarette's problem. It's Right. Well, I can't help you with the cigarette thing, because you can't smoke in the airport. So I suggest Physically, you just... Physically, nobody's going to stop me taking a cigarette out of the bag now. You will be restrained. <laughs> I won't be able to. Trust me. Okay. If you're making threats, sir, no, we will call I'm the police. Serious. Okay. Well, the police will be called and you'll be arrested. Well, at least I'll have a cigarette there. You won't be able to because you can't smoke in police stations either. So get somebody here right now. Someone so is coming to speak to you it's as quickly as possible. It's more than five hours now. I'm okay. waiting. Do you what see time did that you... is acceptable? Okay. The only thing you it can do. Take let five me just. Hours. The only thing you can do is wait patiently. It shouldn't take Because five you and me hours. talking like this is just delaying it. And that will. If Controlling that immigration that isn't just about manning the borders. In 135 countries around the world, British immigration staff vet those who want to travel to Britain. In India, much of this work is done at the British High Commission in Delhi. At 7.30, visa applications are delivered under armed guard. Up to 1,500 are processed every day. Entry clearance officer Dan Brown has been seconded to Delhi for three years. He's one of four staff processing today's cases. We're the first stage of the immigration control and it's, it's our job to maintain the integrity of the control. So we're trying to stop people um, travelling in the first place to the UK. We've got no right to go there. Some applicants need to come to the High Commission in person for extra checks. Officer Brown prepares to question a financial analyst whose figures don't add up. Okay, this gentleman's applied under the old highly skilled migrant scheme, so it's now known as the points-based system. He sent his documents off to the UK to prove that he is a highly skilled migrant. He has to show that he achieved 75 points from his age, his qualifications and his previous earnings. And who completed your application form? Sorry? Who completed your application form? Me. And are the details on your form correct? Yeah. What did you get points for? Uh, my graduation. And uh, my age. And which college did you go to? It's did you go to Osmania itself or to a different college? Osmania too. When did you start at Osmania? Oh, I think uh, 1999, uh, something like that. Okay. And what subject was your degree in? Sorry. What did you specialise in for your degree? Yeah, so, all right. Um, actually, uh, it's a long time, so I can't remember. Officer Brown records every answer, no matter how vague. So you can't tell me what, what speciality you did your degree in? Oh, uh, it might be in accounting. It might be. What do you mean might be in accounting? No, it, it's, I think it's, it's in accounting. An inspector? At Heathrow, the South African bodyguard is still being held. He's seen the end of one shift and the start of another. Officer Richard Smith picks up the case. You've not, you've not been here before, have you? You've no. not been out of South Africa before? No. You're coming with very little funds. Is that why, because of those um, things? Well, these, these are the things that they look make up. us think that you're not a genuine okay, visitor. OK, OK, OK. In my frame of mind, I'm just trying to explain. They should trust me because um, the innocence of the first time jail, and I'm not here to make or do anything wrong or try to get work. Everything's right there. I understand what you're saying. Right. That's what they're looking out for. Okay. Have you understood? So, it's because I'm poor. <laughs> I can't help it. I, I, I don't have money now. With the interview over, the man won't have to wait much longer for a decision. If your opinion is that we should give him the benefit of the doubt, th there are aspects to his circumstances that aren't entirely satisfactory, but on the other hand, um, there are aspects to his case that are perfectly satisfactory. I get right. the impression that he, at this moment in time, is not intending to stay and work. We've got your fingerprints on record. We've noted that you intend to go back on whatever it was in May, 18th yeah. of May, 17th of May. OK, you've got a return ticket. Right, anyway. OK, OK. So, I'm happy that you're not intending to stay at this point. 
don't change your mind within the next few weeks because you are now on record, OK? Well, obviously, <laughs> that was my point from the start. Immigration has given him what they call entry with special conditions. If he stays beyond his return flight date, they'll be the first to know. For the 8,000 Indians a week who apply to come to the UK, it's not just a case of booking a ticket. Hopefuls must provide mountains of paperwork to the Visa Application Centre. Today is one of the busiest days of the year with the start of the summer rush. Visa applicants must pay a fee upwards of £65 and have a valid reason to travel. So you have to look at the black camera, bigger one for 10 seconds on the top. In 2007, they began storing mug shots and fingerprints of everyone who applied to help stop failed applicants trying again with false documents or false identities. On the other side of Delhi at the High Commission, fraud experts check each application. Among those ploughing through the paperwork today is visa assistant Bhavna Ganda. <laughs> Every day we receive forgeries with applications. It includes family visits and forgery with different kind of documents, let's say educational documents, graduation degree, sometimes when we cross-check with the concerned universities and it came as false. Officer Gander is responsible for checking the documents of the man being interviewed by Officer Brown. It doesn't take long to arouse her suspicions. Hi. Osmania University in India is genuine. The certificate is fake. Now Officer Gander wants to know more about his other documents. Uh, this bank statement does not look genuine to me and uh, it's having a spelling errors. Uh, and then applicant has submitted a huge transaction, a huge balance. Balance is very high. Right, uh, sir, my name is Bhavna and I'm calling from the British High Commission, New Delhi. I would be very grateful if you could verify this uh, bank statement for me. Sir, I would like to verify three things in this account. One would be who is the account holder's name. Second, uh, it's part the of bank the confirms team. the man you know, does have an account. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, As the balance is unusually account, high, Officer Gander checks if the statement is genuine. Could you tell me the transaction on 8-4-2008? There is a salary transfer of 45000 So no transaction happened on 8 for 2008 right thank you sir so much okay bye bye sir yeah. i got the written confirmation on this case from my bank manager okay yeah. what was the result it's forged the statement like produced by an applicant is false okay and he has sent me an original bank statement and this so is the one here. from the bank and it's not showing any, any of the salary deposits no, nothing, yeah. so it totally doesn't match up so none of the transactions match with their records it's all forged in the interview, the man is unaware that Officer Brown knows all about his fraudulent documents. What do you do in India? I work as a financial analyst. What is your income? It's around 45,000 per month. Is that before tax or after tax? It's after tax. What is your salary before tax? It's going to be around 6 lakhs something. Six lakhs six or lakhs below six lakhs, yeah. Um, if you were earning six lakhs per year and paying tax, um, you wouldn't take home 45,000 rupees per month. Can you explain this? Yeah, actually, that's, um, that's, it's not the, it's not the, you know, the basic coming in. It's like my, all my overtime and everything. The so you don't declare your overtime on your tax returns, is that oh, right? You can say that. Well, it's it, it's like uh, it's all uh, company technical things. I okay. actually I don't know how okay. they do that. Sure. Can I tell her go have a glass of water, please? I'll get somebody to get you one. All right. Can you get him some water, please? Water. Yes, please. Officer Brown now makes his main move. You have given us a bank statement. Yeah. Can you tell me the last transaction that is shown on your account? Um, I usually, uh, I don't, like, do all this uh, bank statement and all. My wife usually take care of all these things. 
and she like I just signed a check for for a month and what day every month do you get paid? Oh, I think seventh of. Is that when the money goes into your account? Yeah. Okay, as part of your application process, um, we've checked your bank statement with the bank. Um, the bank have told us that the, bank, that the statement you've given us is not genuine. Can you explain this? Actually, I've got no idea regarding these things. Sorry? I've got no idea why they have said that. Can you tell us why you have given us a false document? Uh, actually, it's... Uh, I... Uh, actually, I don't have uh, um, knowledge about these things that is mighty for. But sir, it's your it's your bank statement. It's your income. Your name's on the bank statement. You, I, I don't and you have given us the application. You put in the papers. You Please tell me why you've submitted a false document. I don't take care of these things. I just ask my wife to give me, and she just put on. So is it your wife that has given us a false document? Might be because um, actually I don't. I'm not interested, that much interested in going back. She is the one, like, she, she wants to be there for two years or so. So that's the only reason. OK, what I'm going to do now, um, obviously, because you've submitted false documents, your application will be refused. Um, I'll give you a letter to explain the reasons why the application's been refused. All right. Uh, so you're going to give me all the documents right now? Or... I'm not going to give you the false documents back now. All right. Are you going to give me my passport? I'll now? give you your passport back. Officer Brown tells the man to wait for his passport. Submitting false documents is a criminal offence. The police have been called. The financial analyst formulates a plan. He'll make for the exit. But the door from the British High Commission back into the streets of Delhi is locked. The financial analyst has nowhere to go. And now, the police have arrived. Um, he's applied for a UK visa. Um, he's given us bank statements and he's given us um, a degree certificate. Um, and we have written confirmation that, uh, that those are false documents. Is it, is it, is it like uh, that much a big crime that you don't know? Um, the fact that you've put in false documents means that I can't... To be honest, I can't believe anything that you've told me. If you do make an, a fresh application, your application will automatically be refused. So you won't be issued a UK visa for, for the next 10 years. OK, thank you. The man was arrested, bailed and later charged with cheating and making false documents. He'll be unable to enter the UK for at least 10 years. Coming up, a suspected sham marriage in Delhi. None of the photographs have anyone that I could assume is her friend. Can you explain why? And, and digging deep for illegal workers in Liverpool. <laughs> Immigration officer Sean Flaherty and his enforcement team are planning to raid an Indian restaurant in Liverpool. We've uh, received intelligence uh, to suggest that there are at least six foreign nationals working illegally at this premises. Our intention is to carry out an enforcement visit to the property to search for and arrest all immigration offenders and establish the immigration status of all those present. Illegal working is going on on most high streets. It's virtual slavery. They're paid well below the minimum wage. They shouldn't be working. They shouldn't be in the UK. The team has been keeping an eye on the restaurant. Now they're ready to pounce. Immigration, can you stop what you're doing, please? Set everything down. Stop what you're doing, please. Put the knife down, please, sir. An employer can be fined up to £10,000 for every illegal worker they hire. Um, the team are continuing to sweep the rest of the building to make sure that there's nobody um, either in the basement or in the other floors. We're all getting, setting them in the sterile area and then we're going to process them one by one. Officers search the premises for any evidence that will identify the workers. 
Yeah. Um, what we found is that the gentleman told us that he has some identification, so he's presented to us uh, an asylum registration card. All we'll do for now is take some basic details, go through to the safe uh, area, um, conduct some further checks, and then we'll see what's going to happen. Uh, just to explain to her, we'll, we'll get uh, you or another internist to back on. She's uh, nothing for her to worry about. She just wants to sit there while we do our checks. This lady here, right, she's on the tourist visa, uh -huh. um, but she's obviously working in the kitchen. She's got the white apron on. Um, she's going to be arrested now on suspicion of working in the UK illegally. The names of the employees? <laughs> it's they? not the first time they've been here. The employer has been caught hiring illegal workers before. They work here, uh, you know, just a couple of hours, or, or help me a couple of hours sometimes. Uh, how many days a week would you say? Uh, well, two or three nights a week. Two or three nights a week? Yeah. Um, I will be speaking to you shortly about the status of your employees okay, and your business. Okay, so if you don't mind just hanging on here for, it'll only be a, a short while. Officer Flaherty and the team won't leave until they discover who is legal and who is not. At the British High Commission in Delhi, Officer Hassan Siddiqui is with a man he believes may have entered a sham marriage to get a UK visa. Jadwin Singh recently entered Britain illegally. That's when he met a British woman. Back in India, the couple have tied the knot. Now he wants UK residency. Do you have any evidence of living together? An album with a picture of yourself or with somebody else is not evidence of living together. Okay. Okay. It's in here. Right. Tell me exactly what it is that you have in here. My bills. Uh -huh. Water bills. Water bills. Sorry, council tax. Sorry, council tax. This is dated. How old is your wife? 35 years old. 60. Now she's 60. And how old are you? 30 years old. 35 now me. Wife is 60 and I'm 35. Waiting outside is the 60-year-old bride, a school teacher from Wales. You've got a lot of photographs having spent time together. Do you take these photographs? for the benefit of this interview. photo My wife is very fond of taking photographs. I've noticed that none of the photographs have anyone that I could assume is her friend, mm -hmm. because all of the um, people in these photographs all seem to be other Asian males of your age. Can you explain why, and have you ever met any of her friends? My best friend name is Galen. Glennis. Glennis. Yeah. I met her best friend. Her name is Glennis. Why have you chosen to marry somebody who is um, slightly older than yourself um, and has two grown-up children who I'm assuming doesn't speak Punjabi and I've noticed that your level of English is, is relatively basic. Is there any particular reason that you've chosen to marry this lady? Mr. Singh may say he's in love, but it takes more than that to qualify for residency. And his Welsh wife has yet to be quizzed. At the restaurant in Liverpool, it's not looking good for the owner. The enforcement team has doubts about another member of his staff. Well, just at the moment, sir, I'm just asking the gentleman some very basic details about the identity that he's, he's presented me, and um, roughly how long he's been in the UK, maybe what his status is. How long have you been in the UK? Two or three years. What's happened with your application? The application finished? I can understand. Are you speaking Sarani? Yeah. Kurdish? Okay. The team can call on interpreters when language becomes a barrier. So how much does he actually get paid for working here? Straight through, Sean. 
Yeah, you have two sa'at at dapa on the haram. No, two sa'at, six sa'at. Yeah, employees are currently dealing with tape. Yes, sir. Ten pounds per day. Can you ask him what documentation he showed his employer that he was allowed to work? Yeah. Uh, the owner pays no tax or national insurance for this worker and gives him only a fraction of the minimum wage. Do you want to come with me? Yeah. I'm just going to check your fingerprints, OK? The team wants to find out the worker's status in the UK. They scan his fingerprints and send them for analysis to a national database. The results will come back in minutes. Do you have any evidence that they have right to work in the UK? I asked them for their you know, okay. uh, insurance number and all, on all, all these things. Right. I'm just going to give you a quick search around your headdress, OK? The lady, Fahim Anjum. She was found working in the kitchen. She okay. only came today. We are not working in the She was in the kitchen. She was in the kitchen, but she was here. She doesn't work here. She was wearing an apron mm -hmm. in the kitchen. She so in the kitchen. She may be just trying to you know, make, make some nana for herself or something like that. For, for I, who? I don't know. For, for who? For, for my behalf, I, I was not here, so I cannot answer the question. So she wasn't working. She may have been making nans. The fingerprint results confirm the worker is from Iraq and is here illegally. Ismail, listen, I know you're upset now. Ismail, I'm arresting you on suspicion of working illegally in the UK. OK, you're not obliged to say anything which you wish to do so. I'm going to make your defence if you don't mention when questioned something which you later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. OK, Ismail, for your safety in mind, OK, you're a little bit upset. I'm going to place you in cuffs. Do you want to put your hands out in front for me? Your hands out in front. Thank you. Good night. It's okay. It's okay. At the end of the day, he's led them to us. He's employed them illegally. He's put us in a position now where we've got to arrest him and put him in a police cell. This is a real cost of illegal working. People in tears. Whether it's illegal people like this or legal people who sometimes their businesses go to the wall because some individuals undercut them by thousands. You know, it all ends in tears for somebody. Um, unfortunately for these people tonight, if somebody didn't tears them, they're going to end up in a night in the cells, at the very least. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go back in there now. I'm going to tell him about a penalty. He's facing a fine of £10,000 per person. At the end of the day, you haven't done your adequate checks. You've employed people illegally, which resulted now in two, possibly three people being arrested. We have people now detained in the back of the van who I need to get to the police station. If you want to sign it, sign it. If you don't want to sign it, I'll leave it and record that you haven't signed. Without the passport of the woman found working in the kitchen, it's harder to prove she shouldn't have been there. But help is at hand. You're, you're the brother-in-law, Rachel. So she's over here with a passport and etc. Would you be able to get hold of that passport? Yeah. Uh, have you got it here? Yeah, I've got a passport. Can I have a look, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, it will be. Let's have it from me. Thanks, sir. The woman's relative claims this was her first time at the restaurant. She was only there to learn how to cook. Uh, unless it's a very, very unfortunate night where she picks the only night that we visit to be learned how to make a curry in the kitchen. That's very unfortunate. It is very unfortunate. Or perhaps it's not the first night that she's been in the kitchen. That's I'm sure I'm sure she just arrived, we can see that. Well I know she arrived two weeks ago. Two weeks ago so I mean but it is very unfortunate. Um, the enforcement team don't believe her. She is removed back to India. The man from Iraq was also sent back home. The employer is fined £20,000. In Delhi, it's the turn of the Welsh bride to be interviewed. She must convince the immigration officers the marriage is genuine 
or it will be the end of the couple's dream to set up home in Wales. Uh, hello, Evelyn Rita. Thank you. How are you? You all right? Everything I'm good? I'm okay. <laughs> I'm nervous. Yeah, understandably. Yes. Everybody who sits on that side of the chair always is. How are you finding uh, living in Punjab? It's absolutely amazing. I, I truly embraced India even before I came here. I'd had lots of videos sent over, so I was able to watch all those, and I knew everybody by sight before I met them. So that was, that was nice, and I, you know... How, how do you think they've reacted re in regards to, you know, um, you're, you're from the UK yes. and uh, you don't speak Punjabi. How, how is the interaction? Well, you know, they're very loving towards me and they were very accepting of me from the very beginning, even when we were talking and laughing and saying Sasri Gal on the phone and, you know, things like that. So tell me a little bit about how both you two met. In the UK. I was out walking my dog on the beach and on the breakwater and I saw Jas sitting on his own and um, I, th I thought I just said hello you know and he said hello and he smiled at me with his gorgeous smile and I thought oh he's rather gorgeous <laughs> but he's very young. Slowly slowly we got to know each other and I helped him with his English and um, we just clicked you know, we clicked straight away. How did you decide to get married? What was the, you know, who made a decision? Did he propose? Well, it wasn't a romantic, <laughs> it wasn't a romantic setting at all. I, 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 I think we were in the kitchen and um, we probably, because he's been showing me Indian cooking and how to make chapatis and things like that. So we probably, I think it was had a meal and sat down and, and he said, do you think you would like to marry me? So I said, yes. <laughs> I said, yes, definite. OK, great. What would you do in, if there's a scenario where, unfortunately, your sponsor doesn't get entry clearance and cannot join you in the UK? Are, are you happy to stay in India? You do like it a lot here. You know his family. I, I like it a lot here, and I know his family. But, I, you know, all my family are in the UK, my dog and my house and my home and my two boys. So really, you know, living in India isn't an option for me. What, what are you going to do? Because if we refuse entry clearance, uh, are you going to stay or are you going to go back? Well, I That's just, what it comes down to. Yeah. I, I, I haven't really, I haven't thought about that, to be honest, because I thought, I you know, I just I thought because we it's genuine relationship and we love each other and we want to be together that we might be lucky enough to get a visa. And that's that's on, honestly the only answer I can give you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not going back without him, all right? <laughs> Coming up. Will the newlyweds be able to live happily ever after? We're going to... What do you intend to see and do in the UK? And a visa hopeful invents a new tourist destination. Uh, Birmingham Palace. What's Birmingham Palace and why do you wish to see it? The immigration team in Delhi process up to 1,500 visa applications every day. Officer John Spence is a key member of the team. It's his job to investigate whether applications are credible. Rahul Jain, counter for Rahul Jain. Rahul Jain is applying for a two-year working tourist visa. He must prove tourism is the main reason for his trip. OK, how long do you intend to stay in the UK? England, how long do you want to stay in England? Two years. What do you intend to see and do in the UK? There are famous palaces that I want to see. Such as? Which one? Uh, Birmingham Palace and Tower Bridge. OK. What's Birmingham Palace and why do you wish to see it? It's very famous there. I want to see it. It belongs to the old kings and uh, it is once he had a wonderful seat. So why can you only name me two places that you wish to see in the UK? 
um, one of which is not the correct name, and one of which you can't describe to me what it is. Officer Spence types up every answer to provide a record of the evidence. When I go on holiday, I know exactly what I want to see. If I came to India, I'd say I want to see the Taj Mahal, I'd say I want to see the Golden Temple. Why can't you tell me what you want to see in the UK? Madam, that's right. But the city of London, which is the England city, is the most famous. England is very famous and there are many places to see there. OK. You've been offered a job. Doing what? And I've given an assistant a job so that I can afford my money. You've offered a job of an assistant so that I can cover my expenses. Officer Spence has heard enough to make a decision. I'm not satisfied that you want to enter the UK for a working holiday, as you have claimed, or that you plan to leave the UK at the end of your stay. The only thing you have managed to plan is a part-time job, and that suggests for me that it is your intention to take full-time employment rather than to go to the UK for tourism. I mean, he has to show that the primary purpose of his visit is for tourism. Um, I'm afraid that this chap hasn't done so. This chap knows only two things that to tell me about the UK, one of which is Birmingham Palace, which clearly doesn't exist. The other Tower Bridge, and I'm not absolutely certain he knows what that is. Um, my suspicion, frankly, is that this chap is going to go there to the UK to work for two years at a markedly reduced rate than employing the same person in the UK would cost his sponsor. No redeeming features at all, as far as I can make out. A completely straightforward refusal. Bad news for the would-be tourist. But will the newlyweds do any better? I need, I need a hug. I need hugs. Oh, this is huge for us because I don't want to go back to the UK without my husband. When you love someone and you're used to being with them, that's very difficult. It's not easy for Officer Siddiqui either. He consults his boss, Alex White. Do you have any concerns about the relationship at all? Well, um, there is a significant age difference, mm. and um, you know it's open to well, you know, interpretation here. But mm. um, I cannot, from the immigration rules, say that there is this is not a genuine marriage, and I can't satisfied the relationship subsists. Well, I, I can be as satisfied as I can be on paper, mm -hmm. and from the interview, I can't really say what's inside someone's heart. I do realise it's a bit of a sensitive area, and it is subject to exploitation. But uh, given the information you've given me, I think we're going to have to issue the visa. OK. Let's do that. Let's do that. I'll go and tell them right now. All right. Thanks. Oh, bye. Hi. Have a seat, please. Please have a seat. Thank you. Um, having assessed the application and referred it, um, we've decided to issue entry clearance and um, we're going to basically ask Jasmine to undertake a medical check before we issue the visa. Um, so that may take a little while. And um, I hope you have a long oh, and fruitful well, marriage. Apart from when I had the children, this is the happiest day of my life and a, and a really good start for both of us. I hope your happiness lasts. Very excited and happy, and just so thankful, and that they you know they believed us, and our story is 100% true. And now we can do all the things that we plan to do, can't we? We're going to teach just to drive in the UK and uh, study and learn more English. You know, well, it just means everything. You know, it's our future, and. Um, I know we'll have a good future together. Jaswin and his wife are now back in the UK, living together in Wales. Well, next, Revenge is just a few paces behind and there's a safe to be cracked in brand new prison break. If you have one of those clever Sky Plus HD boxes, you can watch in glorious high definition on Channel 170.